we're going to talk about how the forms of the passive and middle, okay, the verbs which have the verb forms that have passive and middle at once that are identical, uh, work in ancient Greek. Um, and what we're doing is slightly different from what's in the book. Um, and I think you'll understand why. What we want to do is show you how it's systematic, okay? Um, and so what we put on, uh, on the, on the um, blackboard is the middle passive, middle slash passive endings, the endings which are the same for both middle and passive, will tell you which verbs have these. But you can see that they're divided between what we call primary, the book calls primary, and what we call secondary. Um, the primary endings go for unaugmented verbs, the secondary for augmented verbs. The other thing that we, we can add is that the primary endings work for subjunctives in Greek, and the secondary endings work for optatives, right? Because the, we've seen this association before between primary or present tense and uh, with a subjunctive, and secondary or past tenses with the optative. Okay, so these are the these are personal endings. The difference the difference in the um, between active and middle slash passive in Greek is reflected in personal endings only, not the formation rules for the tenses, uh, um, but in but in the way that they are, the personal endings are added on. So here they are, here, my, psi, tai for the singular, meta, the tai for the plural in the primary endings, and then similar but slightly different, in some cases identical, man, so, ta, and that for the singular, and meta, the ta. You can see you've got eyes, ai's in the primary forms, and O's in the secondary ones, right? Mm -hmm. um, the forms that are identical are the first and second person plurals, the others are all different. Um, there's one thing that's tricky about these forms, and that's the second person singular forms, because what you, you have is an ending that begins with the letter S, okay? You've seen some of the problems that this creates for the future. In the case of the future, the S actually at a certain point disappeared and then got restored by analogy to the kinds of forms that we've been looking at. The S is an unstable sound in Greek when it occurs between vowels. So we're going to have to learn some funky things for the second person singular. But the others are quite straightforward. So I think one really helpful approach, and you agree, Belisi, is to learn the, the primary and the secondary endings. These are personal endings for the separate persons of the verb. First, memorize that in these lists. My psi tai, methoset, and tai. Right? And so tai, and tai. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to look at how they actually function in actual verbs. So just, just to give you a preview before we switch to that, um, since, since the category of voice is the primary category for all, all Greek verbs, Effectively, all the words that we learned are active so far. We have to learn a whole new set of them using these personal endings mm -hmm. for everything that we've learned so far. That is the imperfective aspect of the indicative, the perfective aspect of the indicative, the aorist, and then the subjunctive and the optative. Okay, um, that sounds overwhelming. It's not really because it's a system, and the formation of the verbs works the same way that you've already learned. So. Don't uh, don't get freaked out. Okay, we're gonna do it in, a, in pieces, and you'll get the hang of it. All right. So let's look at the first, the next screen. So here's how you make the present indicative passive. Okay, um, and you can see we're, we're using the verb luo to release or or destroy, and um, so this form in the passive voice is going to mean I am released or I am destroyed as opposed to I release or I destroy, okay? So which I or you or he, she, or it, okay, depending on the person, is being acted upon, is being done, something's being done to you. So um, if you look at the forms, what have you got? You've got my, psi, tai, methas, that, and tai, and in between them, We've got O E E, O E O. You know what that is? That's the thematic vowel, right? Um, and, it, and it's coming between the stem of the verb lu and the personal endings my psi tai methus that and tai. So the, the forms are simple. Okay. The only one that's tricky is the second person singular form, in which two things happen: the s between the epsilon e 
and the ai of the psi ending disappeared and then ai contracted into either of two things and you're going to see both of them lue and lue with an eta those are really bad forms okay so that's second person singular passive that means you are released but it looks identical to third person singular active lue and third person singular active subjunctive lue with an eta right so those are those are things to watch out for. Those are gotchas, okay? Um, and the system wasn't set up to work that way. Sound changes in the language made it happen, okay? So um, the system was set up to be distinctive, but but sometimes other things supervene and mess up things. But the language tolerates those kinds of ambiguities, partially because those are such different such situations. The person is different. The, One's active, the other's mid, middle or passive, and so forth. Okay, so in the plural, you, ha you don't have this problem. Um, the, the, you have the thematic vowels o e o, or the way they alternate through the three persons in the ending metastat and in time. Let's switch to the next screen. What, and here we see the imperfect indicative passive. Okay, um, and we we do what we do with an imperfect. We augment it. So in the case of luo, you add the e at the beginning. You're missing a little breathing there. Let me see. Okay. <laughs> um, and you have the stem blue, and then you have the thematic vowel, O-E-E, -E, or in the singular, and O-E-O -E in the plural, and then the endings of the secondary middle passive endings, men, saw, ta, methas, the, nta. Again, the one that's tricky is the second person singular because the S disappears between E and, and O, e, the E and the O, and then EO becomes OU by a regular sound process in Greek. A combination of a short E and a short O gives you U in Greek. So you get ELU, which at least doesn't look like anything else. Right. Okay. Now let's move on one more screen and we'll look, kind of now look at the uh, so called present passive and in the subjunctive and in the optative. Okay. Remember, we, we talked about these as being the subjunctive and the optative of the imperfective aspect. And now we're going to see what it looks like in the passive and in the case of these verbs, the passive and the middle voice. Okay, we're not, this lesson doesn't talk to you about the middle, we'll learn about it next, but we'll at least stick with what we've got. So um, again, what distinguishes the subjunctive from the indicative is the fact that the thematic vowel, the O or E, which we learned is O, E, E, O, E, O in the persons, gets lengthened to omega and eta. So you can see the, the way this is functioning. And you get, you've get got forms consisting of lu plus the thematic vowel plus the passive personal ending, my, psi, tai, methus, that, and tai. In the second person singular, once again, we have the, the problem of the disappearance of the s and the contraction of the eta and the alpha iota, in this case, into eta iota uh, with an iota subscript which is the same as the second person singular indicative and the same as the third person singular active subjunctive. Right? You're going to be, keep these things, keep the possibilities in mind when you see a form like that. When it comes to the optative, again, the formation rule is the same. You have the, the stem lu in the optative. Remember, we, we uh, by contrast with the subjunctive, we zero out the contrast between E and O thematic vowel. It's O all the way through. You have the iota, that's the sign of the optative, and then you have the secondary passive endings, main, sa, ta, methas, the, nta. The only one that's tricky, again, is the second person singular, where the s disappears, but nothing else happens. You don't get a contraction. You get luoya. So I hope you see that this is a this is a pattern. If you learn your my, sa, ta, methas, the, nta, main, sa, ta, methas, the, nta, you can account for it and even recognize, I think, everything. The ones that are tricky that you really need to need to concentrate on learning are the second person singular forms. Yep.